All righty. Well, welcome to our uh, midweek morning man, and we're glad that you're joining us, uh, both physically and virtually. Um, we hope to have a wonderful time this morning. And so the words are on the screen. The words are going to be on your screen, too. So if you would, sing with us. Heaven's Jubilee. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. And for that jubilee yonder skies. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting, shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise. rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. when we meet our blessed Savior in yonder in the sky. Sings that now I almost see all the sainted dead, rising for that jubilee. Just ahead, in the twinkling of an eye, change with them to be all the living saints to fly to that jubilee. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting, shouting on that happy morning when we all shall gladly rise. Oh, what glory, oh, hallelujah, glory when we meet our blessed Savior. We're so glad you're here this morning. Just join us as we sing and pray and share the Word of God this morning. All right? Revive us again. We praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, Thine the glory. Hallelujah. Victory this morning, victory in Jesus. I heard it old, old story how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious.
ceiling of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and he caused the blind to see and then a cry dear Jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory oh victory school and so uh, we're excited for him uh, uh, you can look at him and know that he has gone through 12 hard years of school we got one more year to go that's awesome and so uh, today what I'd like to do I'd like for Luke just to pray for all of our students and ask him to pray uh, that God would keep us safe and he would watch over our students our faculty if you've been watching our social media we've been praying for teachers administrators the staff we're going to be praying for all of those every day, so we're asking you to continue to do that. We're going to ask Luke if he would lead us in prayer as uh, uh, Cole plays just a little bit, and he, he plays as he goes, you pray too, and let's pray together, all right? Dear God, thanks for saying, thanks for allowing us to be here. Thank you for letting us join as a church in your house. Just thank you for allowing us not to get sick. Just be with all the students as they go back to school. It's a new adventure, and let us not lose sight of you. And we have you—you you know the plans that we go through. And let us have safety, and let us not get sick. And in your name, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Luke. Appreciate that very much. Amen. I can't say enough. This kid has done this year. I mean, he's really grown. Uh, in the past six months and in and, and, and most of these videos he's been on the other end doing something helping set up and so uh, we're gonna miss him next week um, but we know that uh, he's gonna go and, and, and make great things so uh, let's continue worshiping uh, when we all get to heaven sing the wondrous love of Thank you. 
Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for today. And God, uh, we praise you for who you are. We praise you for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you continue to do. Uh, God, I just thank you for another week, uh, another opportunity to meet in your house. God, I thank you for, uh, for each and every individual who's in here, God, that's come to, to listen to your preaching this morning, your teaching. God, I pray that uh, you would uh, be with Brother Kim, um, and God, give him your words to speak and not of his own. God, we love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody, it's so, so good to see you again this morning. I want to thank you uh, for joining us again for our midweek manna and also for our Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, it's always good to get to be able to open up God's Word and, and uh, sing it and preach it and pray it and just have the opportunity to do that. Just want to share with you a uh, busy day around here today. A lot of things going on, a lot of things already going on. Um, we, if you came in today, you saw all the school supplies. And, uh, man, I just can't thank you enough uh, for being able to uh, give uh, along with Life Baptist Church and uh, their, their donation. Uh, we have we lacked $110 raising $3,000 for our school supplies. So give the Lord a hand. That's good. I'm proud. $2,890. I asked Tim this morning. Tim's uh, taking over for Mr. Ree, and uh, he's taking care of the books now. And uh, he said that's how much we got. So I'm really proud of that, really thankful. Cole and I were, uh, he, he said, I'm hoping between uh, uh, $1,500. And I said, well, I'm going to go to $1,500. $1,500 to $2,500, so we were in the ballpark, all right? Actually, the Lord met and took care of that. So thanks, everybody, for giving tonight. Uh, and as you come to the drive through prayer service, uh, uh, if you have children, uh, we're going to be giving away school supplies. for. Uh, we've got 20 per grade, uh, and even in from the junior high and high school, we have supplies for them as well. So, so please, if you uh, uh, have children, let us know. Let me know. My, my number will be on the back if you need to call us. Uh, and if we have things left, we'll be more than happy to try to help you in any way that we can. But thank you for being here this morning. It's been good already. hope you've had a good week. Um, and this, I don't know if any of y'all were in the second service on Sunday, uh, but we had a young lady that came, and Miss Tammy. And Tammy had, had uh, uh, prayed to receive Christ, and uh, she uh, was here on Sunday morning and, and made that public. I, I actually helped her make that public, and she was sitting at the back back there. And then I have another young man that uh, was saved. Uh, he's uh, uh, in his uh, late 60s, and he was saved as well. So, so God's been good. He's been doing some neat things. Uh, Cole and I had a Zoom meeting yesterday uh, with uh, the several local pastors and Brother Laramie LeCue, who works for the Arkansas Baptist State Convention now. I had a great time uh, learning from them and then sharing what we were at. They want to know where we were, what we were going to be doing. We're, we're going to continue to do our uh, two services at 9 and 11 on Sundays. Uh, Keith, this Sunday, is going to start uh, Sunday school online again at 1015. Uh, I'm not going to do it live yet. We're going to wait till after uh, Labor Day to pull everything back together. Uh, give us a little more time. We're praying for our kids. I said, just can't ask you enough to pray for them as they go back to school. Uh, so a lot of things going on. So uh, let's just bow our head again. Let's just ask the Lord to meet these needs today. Father, I love you. Thank you so much for the privilege you give us to call on you at any moment of the day. Uh, at any moment of the hour, whatever time it is, Lord, you're always there. We are the God that never slumbers nor never sleeps. Father, you're always on your toes, and Lord, nothing is taking you by surprise, not even with COVID-19. Father, we know that you're in control, and we're just praying for those who have gone through some very difficult days here in our church, uh, for our church family, uh, for those in need. I'm praying for our students, faculty, staff, administration, Lord, bus drivers, cafeteria workers, Lord, everybody, anybody that has anything to do with our school system, for our colleges and universities, as they, some have already moved in, some will be moving in. Lord, we're just praying, Father, for your protection. We pray, Father, that you would stem the tide. We pray, Lord, that you'd be with us this morning as we open up your word. Thank you for the precious word of God today. We love you very much. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Psalms 31 this morning. Psalms 31. We're going to finish out what we started last week in Psalms 31. Uh, again, this is one of David's prayers. Uh, this is one of his psalms, and uh, we had five different scenes in this psalm from different eras uh, in the life of David. 
And we went over the first three last week. The first one was uh, uh, when we picked up in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 23 about how that David put his desire and his defense and his in his when he was in danger when he was looking to follow the Lord and King Saul was was after him and how that God had taken care of him and so so that was the first scene verses one two three and four the second part of it was uh, how that David in his second scene is how that uh, David Saul is now gone he's passed away now David is being set up on the throne of God in verses five through eight and then the third scene if you will, is when David and Bathsheba uh, had committed adultery and it was the, the months after that, uh, a very trying time in his life uh, and we uh, can all relate to David. We know he's a man after God's own heart. But when we come down to this morning where we begin, where we want to start at, we're going to begin in a new scene, in scene four, if you will. It's a time of Absalom's rebellion. A time when his own son was trying to kill his father. A time when Absalom, where the word of God becomes even truer to David because when Nathan the prophet uh, spoke to him and told him about the, the man that had everything and stole the one little lamb from the man that only had one, we find that uh, he said the sword would never depart from your house. And so David went through his uh, daughter being raped by his son uh, and now Absalom trying to overtake the kingdom and we find that Absalom uh, is doing his best to get rid of his dad in his time of rebellion. So as we begin this, this is a time of, of if you will, a time of, of uh, when David would, would, it was a time of supplication, a time of lifting up the Lord uh, in knowing that God you're in control. Uh, sometimes, sometimes we forget that, don't we? Sometimes we forget that God's in control, that he's always on the throne. He's never stepped off yet. He's never abdicated his place on the throne. And so David puts himself back, uh, if you will, in these difficult times when his own son was after him. The foes were gathering, if you will, against David. And he sees himself fleeing from Jerusalem with his bodyguard during this time. And, and, and when his heart, he had been lifted up in prayer, and the psalm tells us how that David prayed. You know, sometimes... I don't know about you, but I don't know how to pray. Sometimes, I'll be honest with you, I, I, Lord, I don't know what to say. And so this is a time in David's life where he'd come to that place. How do I pray, Lord? How do I pray? And, and so, so with, with heartfelt uh, uh, graciousness of God, uh, we come and David makes his supplication known. He comes praying for God. I read something this morning I wrote down, uh, and it, it talks about, it says, we're not to focus on our problems, on our trials, and on our difficulties, the circumstances and situations. Don't, don't focus on them. Many times that's what we do. We focus on what's wrong, okay? I want us to take our focus on that, off of that, and put our focus on God who takes care of all of our needs. And he takes care of all those things. We're to focus on God, that he's bigger than any of our problems, He's bigger than any of our circumstances. He's bigger than any of our situations. If he's really God, and I believe he is, don't you? Amen? I believe he's really God. Then, then let's take our focus off of the negative and put our focus on the positive. And I think that's what David was trying to do here. Chapter 31, if you will, let's begin verse number 14. When David begins to pray for victory, David knew where his strength lay. I hope you know where your strengths lie. And our strengths lie in the Lord, not in us, uh, because we're frail and we're fickle. And, uh, and even though David's whole kingdom was on teetering and tottering on ruin because of his son and because of the, the rebellion of how the, his son had, had basically split the kingdom in two, we find uh, David cries in verse 14, and he says these words, But as for me, that reminds me of how that... Uh, uh, Joshua says, as for me and my house, we're going to what? Serve the Lord. He said, but as for me, and this, uh, this is the same thought. He said, but as for me, I trust in you, O Lord. As for me, David made that choice. Now remember, he's gone through the fires before when Saul tried to kill him. 
He's gone through the fires before when uh, he was running for his life, when he had committed adultery. He's gone through the fires and he's going through them now. And he's made this choice. He's made this decision, Lord. Uh, but as for me, as for me, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to give you my circumstances. He's praying for a conscious victory from the Lord. He's asking God, Lord, I want to win. I don't want to lose. I, if I win, you win. Lord, if you win, I win. And so he begins to speak about that. He said, I trust in you. And my question is this, whom or what are you trusting in today? Circumstances, situations, trials, tribulations. Peter says they're much more precious than gold. In 1 Peter chapter 1, he tells us that, that all these things, and we're all going to go through them. Uh, we, we, we've spoken time and time again on the situation about us in a, in a storm, uh, just got through a storm, or there's a storm on the horizon. Know that, that this is how life is. Uh, because you're a Christian, because I'm a Christian, doesn't mean we won't have these trials. We won't have these difficulties. We won't have these situations. We will. We're going to. And I truly believe God's trying to teach us and help us to become better men and women of God. And, and I know, as I said, sometimes, Lord, I don't know how to pray. Sometimes I'll just say, Lord, I, I'm, I, you're going to have to take over. That's when the Holy Spirit, who lives inside of us, that's when the Holy Spirit puts his arm around us and says, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to comfort you. So David cries for a conscious victory. But, Lord, I, as for me, I trust in you, O Lord. He says in verse number 14, he says, I say you are my God. Now, remember, we've been talking uh, the last four Sundays, not this past Sunday, but the last three previous to that, about the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my God shepherd it's it's a possession he has him and here david again calls on god he says lord you are my god you're my god lord I, 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 you're a covenant keeper. You are Jehovah, the God of covenant. You're the God that takes care of your Elohim, the God of creation uh, in the beginning God. Uh, I, and uh, I was doing this week uh, and uh, talking about uh, reading a book uh, called the Joshua Code. And in the Joshua Code, he, he gives 20, uh, 52 scriptures in that book that we ought to memorize. And so he begins in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God. What happened in the beginning? When it happened? When, before the beginning, God always was, always has been. He's the creator God. Elohim, uh, uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. All three of them were present at the, at the creation of our world, of our universe, when God just spoke out of, and out of nothing came everything. And so God's in that business. So, so the, the God of creation, his kingdom may have fallen apart, David's, but he still knew, God, you are my God. Okay, and uh, as Granny said this while ago, she said, we all are having trouble, Brother Kim, we do. We, all of our families go through those difficult times. All of our personal lives go through those hard times. And we sometimes wonder, Lord, how are we going to get through this? Lord, how are we going to pay that next bill? God, how are we going to get clothes for our kids? Lord, how are we going to feed our families? How are we going to do that? And, and guys, I, I, I just want you to know, Keep reminding yourself, but I trusted in you, O Lord, because you are my God. You're my God. It's in your hand. Uh, all life's ways, and, and when they, they, they all go by the way, it's all in God's hand. That's where our strength becomes stronger in the Lord Jesus. He wants that victory. He desires us to have that victory. Look, if you will, at, at verse number 15. He says, my times, that's every moment of every day, are in your hand. Lord, everything I have is in your hand. He said, uh, deliver me from the hand of my enemies. He said, and from those who would persecute me. David had those after him. Uh, at this point in time, it's his son Absalom. When it's prior to that, it's been uh, uh, Saul. Prior, and, and even as a young boy, when he fought the lions and the bears and the giant, I mean, he had all kind of enemies around him. 
And he knew those things. So, so be reminded that God is taking care of us. Lord, you're, my times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies, from those who would persecute me. And then he says in verse number 16, and as he brings us to verse number 16, he prays for victory in this verse 16. In verse 16, kind of wraps this up. He said, make your face to shine on your servant. He said, uh, uh, and, and save me for your mercy's sake. You know, sometimes we want to be selfish. Lord, save me because I'm I'm, I can't do this anymore. Lord, save me. But David here cries. He said, Lord, save me for your mercy's sake because of who you are. Then he, then he comes down to verse 17 and he begins now to, to think about vengeance. He begins to think about vengeance, and vengeance is, is uh, getting them back before they get you back. Can I have an amen on that? We all know how that goes. And uh, the scripture here tells us these things. And, and, and I remember in our first church, in Atlanta and I's first church, there was a young man uh, that had a problem, uh, a boyfriend, girlfriend problem, and she quit dating him and started dating Another boy, and he hated that old boy, scared me. I mean, he just did everything. He, did, he wanted to, to hurt him and mess him up and do all this stuff. And I said, now, listen, you can't do that. Well, you give me some scripture on it. I said, I'll be glad to. So take your Bibles and go to Proverbs chapter 25, verse 25. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 25. And in Proverbs 25, 25, you'll see what the Scripture tells us to do when it's time for vengeance. Proverbs chapter 25, uh, verse number 25. In, and as he begins to share that, uh, 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 look, you can look at verse 21 first, all right? Proverbs 25, 21, and then 25. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't give you everything first. You need to get the synopsis of where we are. But Proverbs 21. Uh, 25. It says, if your enemy, and we all have enemies, whether they're wriggly, be hungry. If your enemy's hungry, in chapter 25, verse 21, he says, give him bread to eat. And if he's thirsty, give him water to drink. Now you think, well, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make any sense. Why would I want to do that? That's, he's my enemy. Well, if you'll remember in David's life, when Saul he had opportunity after opportunity to kill Saul. God brought him to his hands. Even, even his, his most valiant warriors ran and said, look, look, there he is. And, and, and Saul was uh, relieving himself one day in a cave. And old David just went up and took a knife and cut off the bottom of his tunic. And he walked away, slithered, and got away from him and said, I was close. Just be reminded I'm here know that but when you want to do something to your enemy you don't want to do the ugly stuff you want to do the right stuff 21 25 look what he says look at verse 25 he said it's cold waters to a thirsty soul so is good news from a far country it's good news i love to hear good news i love to hear good things happen you know what i love to hear when a lost man gets saved I love to hear when somebody that's away from God comes back to God. I love to hear those good things. And you know what? There's nothing I know anymore that could bring an enemy back to the Lord than you doing the right thing, than me doing the right thing, than us doing the right thing. They can bad math you. They're going to. They're going to tell ugly stories on you. They're going to lie about you. They're going, they're going to do things that's ugly and you want to get in the flesh. Now, let's look in the New Testament and see what the New Testament says in, in Romans chapter 12. In Romans chapter 12, basically, Paul gives us the same story that the writer of Proverbs, Solomon, who gives us the same story. In Proverbs, I mean, in Romans chapter 12, look at verse number 18. Romans chapter 12, verse number 18. He says these words. If, now that's big, that's contingent upon us, okay? Not on God, but it's contingent upon us. If... It be possible, as much that lies within you, live peaceably with all men. Now, boy, that's hard to do, isn't it? Man, that's hard to do. And, 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 and I think the thing, the thing that the key to this is, uh, is allowing God to do that through you. Uh, how many of you have ever heard the phrase, I'll forgive you, but I ain't a forgetting? Mm -hmm. It's easy, isn't it? I can forgive. 
But boy, I tell you, it's hard to forget because it's, it's, it's if it's, especially if it's done something against me or said about me or done to me. You know, when I when I, I in the past and I've done the right thing, I've done things that people thought I ought to do, and they thought, well, that's good, you did a good thing, and then I had to make a stand. Guess what? I'm the worst guy in town. I was handy as a pocket on a shirt when it benefited you, but when it didn't benefit you, guess what? I'm a bad guy. And so that's what happens to us. He says, if, if possible, as much that lies within you, live peaceably with all men. Look at verse 19. He says in verse number 19, Dear to beloved, Paul's writing, avenge not yourself, but rather give place, he goes on to tell us, uh, to wrath. He said, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Let's let him take care of our battles for us. Uh, Michael W. Smith sings a song, uh, this is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Uh, he goes on to say that over and over and over again. But you know what? Sometimes we think uh, the end of the world thinks that we're surrounded, but folks understand that it's not that we're surrounded but, uh, by the enemy, but we're surrounded by an all-encompassing God. We need to let the Lord fight our battles for us. Look at verse 20. He says in verse number 20, Therefore, if your enemy's hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For in so doing, you shall heap coals of fire on his head. That's right, rascal's going to come away saying, Why aren't you doing this? Because it's the right thing to do. Because that's what God said to do. Do the right thing. Then he says in verse 21, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with what? Good. Do the right thing. If you do the right thing, you don't have to worry about it. If you do the right thing. Now, I, I really believe that's what Christians are called to do. And I'm not saying I've done it every time, but I'm just saying that's what God's called us to do. Do your best. Keep doing the right thing. And, and then, now let's go back to, to, to Psalms 31. Let's go back to Psalms 31. Look at verse number 17. Let's listen to the vengeance that comes out from David. He says these words in chapter, seven, uh, chapter 31, verse 17. He says these words. He said, do not let me be ashamed. He said, let them that be silent in the grave, let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak insolent things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. Okay? He says, listen, God, you take care of that. You, you know how to do that better than I. God, you know more about that. So David prays for the word of God, for the God himself to take over and take over when it's against the man of God, the woman of God, the righteousness of God in doing the right thing. So our job is to do the right thing. I truly believe that's what he wants to do. So when David prays, prays for victory here, he also prays for vengeance. Now remember, he's praying about his son, his own son's trying to kill him. His own son, his own flesh and blood. And I'd say that's a hard thing. So he's got to do the right thing. He knows he's supposed to do the right thing. And it's hard to do the right thing in the midst, in the heart of a battle sometimes. Now let's look, if you will, uh, uh, about uh, the safety of God in verse 19. Look at verse number 19. He says, oh, how great is your goodness. Uh, we've all said it. We've all heard it. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. He's good. And so David here says, Lord, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, who revere you, who know your God. He says, which you have prepared for those who trust in you in the presence of your sons of men. We talk about the goodness of God. He is good. Look what he says. Here's the greatness of God in verse number 20. Look at verse 20. He says, you will hide them in your secret place of your presence. From the plots of man, you shall keep them secretly in a pavilion, in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. God, you're going to protect me. You're going to watch over me. If you'll remember, if you go back when Moses was on the mount and he was getting the, the Ten Commandments, he asked God, God, I'd love to see you. I want to see you. And remember, that's when God hit him in the cleft of the rock. And as God hit him in the cleft of the rock and the Lord's greatness, the Lord's goodness, the Lord's Shekinah glory passed by him. And when it passed by him, he saw the hinder parts, if you will, of his robe. 
And when, when God walked by, he caused, caused the, I, God told him, he said, now no man can look on me and live because of my purity, because of my righteousness, because of my holiness. Folks, here's the thing. God's going to hide us in his righteousness. God's going to hide us. That's what Jesus has done. When we receive Christ as our Savior, he hides us in the righteousness of God. He overshadows us and takes care of us. So, if you will, he is a great God. He's great. He's not only a good God, but he's a great God. He is awesome. And then let's look at the graciousness of God. Look at verse 20 and 21. He said, you will hide them in the secret place. He said, uh, of your presence. From the plots of men, you shall keep them secretly in that pavilion. From the strife of tongues, he said, Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me your marvelous kindness in a strong, strong city. He says, For I said in my haste, you ever, is your mouth ever overtaken uh, what you're supposed to be saying and doing? Yeah. He says, In my haste, he says, your eye, I, I am cut off from you before your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my supplications when I cried out to you. I'm glad God's a good forgetter. Aren't you? God's a good forgetter. I'm so thankful for that. I'm glad he doesn't hold the sins that I did uh, when I was just a boy against me now 40 years later. I'm glad he doesn't do that. Because uh, I couldn't get over the sins when I was just a young man uh, or a middle-aged man or an older man or now a senior adult. I right, bless God, I'm a senior adult now, all right? I'll be 60 this year, so, so just get that. And so the thing about it is, is that God's still good. He always forgives us back when, and he forgives us. All thing we got to do is confess our sins. That's why he put First John 1, 9 in the Bible. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us us from all unrighteousness i'm glad god's a good forgetter how about you i'm so thankful for that and so so in the safety of the presence of god and and if you will his loving he, he cares he's sympathetic with us remember we don't have a god that can't be touched we have a god that can be touched we had a jesus a god that came to be one of us he became a man 100% God, 100% man. There's never been a time he wasn't God. There's never been a time he wasn't man. He's always has been. That's who Jesus is. But in his sympathy, he gives us his goodness, he gives us his greatness, and he gives us his graciousness. Now, the last scene we want to look at this morning in, in this psalm, the last scene that we look at is verse 23 and verse 24. It's when David finally comes to the, at the end of his life, He's not thinking about himself and his wants and his needs. He's not thinking about the selfishness. He's not thinking about how that he's the king and I can do what I want to do because I'm the king. He doesn't think. He now begins to think about others. He now begins to think. You know, when Jesus came in the New Testament, I believe it's Mark chapter 14, he speaks to us about being a servant. If you wanted to be what you want to need to be, to be a servant. That's what he asks us to be, a servant. If you're asked to go a mile, go two. We need to be two-mile Christians when it comes to helping others. And, and, and sometimes we, we've been way above that and we don't really realize that. And, and uh, when they're talking bad about you, you think, oh, I'm, not, I'm done, it's over. But now listen to the last two verses, uh, verse 23 and verse 24, when David begins to speak about uh, how of the goodness, if you will, how that he comes to, uh, talks about the sweetness and the stability of an almighty God. Look, he says in verse 23, Oh, love the Lord, all you his saints. You're a saint. Two kind of people in the world, saints and ain'ts, all right? You're either one or the other. You're either a saint of God, and you say, well, Kim, I'm not very much of a saint. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, it's not about you calling yourself that. It's about God doing that. He, he made you righteousness in his son. He's hidden you in his son, Jesus. And it's Jesus' righteousness, not yours or not mine. Uh, not especially, especially not mine. And here's what he says, oh, love the Lord, all of us. For the Lord preserves the faithful. And he fully repays the proud person. Love him. That's our job. You know, I, I think the scripture makes it emphatic and very plain. 
If you love the Lord, we're going to keep his commandments. If you love Jesus, keep his commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. Uh, old song we used to sing long, long ago. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee all thy pleasures of sin I resign. When we read Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Paul said, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin any, live any longer therein? Folks, it ought to make us uncomfortable when we get into a, 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 a pit of sin. It ought to make us uncomfortable. Our lives ought to be uh, in such a disarray because we're, because we're not to live in sin any longer. Our job is to live for Christ. Our job is to live for Him. So, so we have a love for the Lord. We have a love for Him. That's the acid test of who we are. Do you love me? Then keep my commandments, he says. Okay? Then he says in verse 24, the last verse, be of good courage. And He, that's God, will strengthen your heart and all you who hope in the Lord. Be loyal. <laughs> Just be loyal to him. You know, uh, we have a dog. I have two dogs at the house. And uh, uh, one dog is Lana's. And she's a little bitty rascal about like that. And uh, uh, if Lana leaves to go on a trip, go see the kids, go somewhere to see the kids, and it's just me and the dog, that dog gets depressed bad. I'm telling you, it's amazing. She does get so depressed. If me and Lana go out, we went Monday, went shopping uh, Monday for uh, uh, some, some students and, and bought them some clothes and, and, and did that Monday afternoon after we got finished here. And, and, and as we got done, and we went come home and she just gets up. When she opens the door, I, I'll hide. I'll keep my legs crossed so she can't see, but she's looking to see if Lana's out there. She's just like this. She's looking and making sure. And when she gets in, she just yaps. Yep, 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 Oh, she gets so excited. She's all excited. And she scratches her leg, and Atlanta has to hit her, you know, because she scratches her legs. And, oh, don't do that. Quit, Lucy, quit, Lucy. But she's loyal to her. And she might come and sit by me, but wherever Atlanta's at, she's going to sit in her lap. I mean, she gets, she cries. She, we go out and sit on the front porch, and she cries because she, Atlanta won't let her sit in her lap. Well, my dog. Uh, well, it's actually Asher's dog, my Labrador retriever. Uh, she's a little over two years old. And Asher, he keeps telling me, he said, Now, Poppy, you're going to have to train Abby Joe. you got to get Abby Joe trained. So we took some videos the other day, and Abby's learning. She's not, I, I, didn't, I can, couldn't afford to send her to school. School costs more than I'm worth. So uh, I couldn't send her to school, but, but we're like, she loved to play Frisbee. She is a Frisbee hunting dog now, I'm telling you. But she, she'll sit down, and she'll mind me pretty good sometimes, every once in a while, not all the time, okay? But she's a loyal dog. She loves me. And she, I'll go out there, and man, she gets so excited. She gets fired up. She runs from one end of the pen back and forth when she thinks I'm coming. And, folks, after two days and I forget to feed her, she really is excited to see me, all right? She gets fired up about that. And so, so, but, boy, she gets so excited. And finally she gets there and she'll jump. I have a pen that's six foot tall. And, honestly, her legs and her head goes over the top of that fence when she jumps in there. She's so excited. That's how God wants us to be to him loyal loving accepting caring that's how god wants us so in these five scenes of david's life david comes to the very end of it and he says be of good courage i know life's hard i i've just took you through five different hard times in my life i know life's difficult we're living in those difficult days. Be of good courage. And God, God will strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Would you bow with me in prayer? Father, thank you today for the Holy Spirit who speaks to us. He speaks with us. And Lord, we pray that he would speak through us so that we would be an encouragement to others. Father, we go through these difficult times not to be uh, uh, harboring ill will and bad thoughts 
and things that are not pleasing to you. But, Lord, we come through these things to become better men and women, better citizens of the kingdom of God. Lord, today, tonight, I pray that you'd bless our church family. Lord, that a lot of our folks sitting right here, a lot of our folks uh, are concerned uh, about these difficult days in which we live. Lord, we're praying, and I'm concerned for those in need. I'm praying, God, you to be that one that when the enemy strikes up against us, that you'd help us to say the right things, not to be ugly back. Lord, help us to know that vengeance is yours, and you're going to take care of that. So, Lord, I'm, I'm all about trusting you. Just help me, strengthen me so that we can trust you, that all of our folks that are here, all the people under the sound of my voice tonight. Lord, I, I know this is... Uh, the, the study of the book of Psalms is a study about you and an in-depth study of who you are. So, Lord, teach us to study you and your character and your conduct and the way that you present yourself, you being an all-knowing, all-seeing, covenant-keeping God. Thank you for that. Lord, I pray for those here this morning that have needs. I'm praying for them, praying for their families, praying that you bless them in a special way. Lord, I'm praying for those who have uh, hurts and hang-ups and habits that hear me uh, through social networking, uh, social media. Lord, I just lift them up to you. I pray for our community. Lord, I pray as our students begin to go back to school. Lord, we pray a hedge of protection about them. Lord, we pray that we would be found loyal and loving to our master. Now, thank you, Jesus, for everything that you do. I pray, Lord, that you'd bless. Take your word and use it as you see fit. Uh, Father, if there's somebody that needs Jesus, may they put their trust in him. May he be their Lord and Savior. And today is the day of salvation. Today would be a good day for that to happen. So, Lord, I pray for them today. I pray for Christians who are struggling right now and who are concerned about the days ahead. So, Lord, just be with them, meet their needs, Take care of us, Father. I pray for those sick and hurting. Bless those in our nursing home. Bless all those, those who are on the front lines taking care of people during this uh, pandemic. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Oh, let's sing a song. Let's sing a verse, all right? God sent his son. They call. Just continue to pray that we'll be able to meet needs and we'll be able to minister to families and do our very best to reach out to a community that needs Christ. Uh, if you need us, my phone number should be coming up here real quickly. Uh, and just send me a text, shoot me a message on Facebook Messenger. I'll do my very best to answer that as best we can. But we want you to know we love you. And next week, our midweek uh, 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 drive-through prayer and uh, dinner, 
is going to be at 5.30 yes. to 7. We're going to back it up 30 more minutes. Our kids will be in school. Uh, our helpers will be in school. So it will back up to five, from 5.30 to 7 is when we'll be doing that. So don't make a note of that. We'll have a note outside when people come through tonight. So don't forget that. We love you. Thank you for the privilege of serving you. Cole, anything else? We're good. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. We love you. God bless you. Take good care. Thanks a lot.